Good evening. I'm Barbara Blackwell, the Chief Executive of Principia, and I am so grateful to be with you all this evening. We've got a great program that is jam-packed with information, updates, and a wide open window into our sustainability programs on both campuses. But I'm going to start with an overall update on all things Principia and the, the important initiatives that we have underway at this moment in time. Principia is on the move. In every area, we are transforming and progressing to meet the needs of today's students. This generation operates in a very different environment from even graduates of just 10 years ago. The impact of technology, artificial intelligence, environmental changes, and the political landscape in our post-pandemic world, all of this demands an ability to flex, to innovate, and to problem solve at unprecedented levels. In many ways, I think today's world calls as urgently for Principia graduates, critical thinkers who magnify the good and approach life from a boundless, unlimited basis more than ever. These characteristics remain central to a Principia education at every level, and they inform our graduates who go on to serve humanity in meaningful and impactful ways throughout the world. There are several overarching initiatives underway, and in future Principia Forwards, we will do a deeper dive on several of these. We've completed the first part of a master planning process. We worked with Christner Architects over the past year, and they have provided us with a blueprint for moving forward on both campuses. So this plan is really a framework for further decision making. We haven't made decisions on, on all of the facilities that will be coming, but this master plan provided us with a blueprint and a context within which we can now be making decisions as we move forward in a strategic way. On Thursday, March 28th, we will dedicate an entire Principia forward to some priorities that have been identified from the master plan on each campus. It's enormously exciting, and, and we are literally building from a boundless basis and providing facilities that will serve our students well into the future and enrich the unique inherent beauty of each campus. So please stay tuned for that March 28th uh, Principia forward, and I think you'll find it really interesting to see some of the plans that um, the architects have proposed for us to consider. At the college, the faculty is engaged in a significant reimagining of the curriculum. It is an exciting and demanding time as they work together to propose a new approach to teaching that is more collaborative and interdisciplinary. In April, we will be bringing you the details of where this work is headed as the future college catalog will be significantly transformed with a curriculum that better meets the needs of today's and tomorrow's students and is right-sized for Principia and poised for growth. So stay tuned for that as well. There are, these are huge initiatives that we have been tackling and that really are positioning us to move forward with confidence in ways that are data informed and innovative and really designed to meet the needs of today and tomorrow. Um, so I really encourage you to to continue to um, sign up for these and to and to be informed about where we're headed. As Principia continues to welcome students of all faiths on both campuses, we're delighted to see how Principians are sharing Christian science in ways that are authentic, loving, and impactful. Recently at the school, a lower school chapel offered on a visiting parent day um, a chapel that gently introduced a sentinel article outlining how to give a Christian science treatment through the approach of reject, replace, and rejoice. This is an exercise that everyone can be blessed by, and we got wonderful feedback from parents who are not familiar with Christian science, but who recognize the value offered by this simple approach to thinking differently. And that's just one of the many, many ways in which we are sharing this wonderful um, foundational truth that um, Principia is built upon. 
Both campuses are devoting additional resources to spiritual life. The college with a dedicated chaplain, who is a former Christian Science military chaplain, and the school with a kit committee dedicated to supporting spiritual life activities at all of the levels from preschool through uh, high school. Internally, we continue to improve our processes and systems. An emphasis on our human resources has resulted in management training, a new approach to performance reviews, and much greater emphasis on professional development. We're professionalizing Principia and the workplace as we strive to make this institution an unparalleled employer. And we're working really hard on that initiative. And it's an exciting one that I think um, that folks are, are, are responding to and recognizing a different level of investment in our employer employees. Enrollment projections for fall 2024 look strong on both campuses. The school has wait lists at several levels and the college has attracted an applicant pool with very strong academic credentials and anticipates continued growth in that entering fall class. All of this work will inform an institution-wide strategic planning process that will begin next fall. Principia is poised to launch into the next century with vigor, a renewed sense of purpose and commitment to our mission of serving the cause of Christian science in ways that are contemporary and relevant to today. And I believe that what you're, you can see on your screen is an outline of all of the various initiatives that have been um, begun in the last year and a half, some of them a little bit before that even, that will then feed into strategic planning so that this round of strategic planning that will begin next fall will be an extraordinarily um, well-resourced re strategic plan with a lot of data, a lot of reporting that has already been done so that when we get to the plan, we know where we wanna go, we know what we need to examine in order to make the best possible decisions for the future of Principia and its progress and growth. I am grateful to each of you for your continued support as we embrace progress, provide our students with exceptional opportunities and continue to punch above our weight, impacting the world in outsized ways. And you too can engage in all of this wonderfulness that's going on here on campus. We're planning for perhaps our biggest ever college reunion this summer. And summer session is full of new and engaging classes Registration for both is open now, and I believe that there will be a link in the chat on this webinar for you to register um, for either of those or both of those activities. On April 8th, we will be celebrating the solar eclipse. And if you find yourself in the neighborhood, let us know. We will be traveling about an hour south for viewing a totality of the eclipse. And we're happy to send you eclipse glasses if you are participating in an eclipse event elsewhere. And that too, I believe, is on the chat. More information about eclipse activities. So for the rest of the program, I'm going to turn this over soon for a brief update from the school on some of the initiatives and particularly the boarding um, program at the school and some changes there. And then really the stars of the show, we will be um, welcoming first school faculty and students to talk about the sustainability program at the school and then college faculty to talk about what's happening there. So uh, build up your questions about the sustain sustainability program and we'll be happy to reserve some time at the end for your questions. But now I'd like to turn this over to Assistant Head of School for Enrollment Management and Residential Life, Terry Grigsby, to tell you a bit more about improvements to the boarding program at Principia School. Terry. Well, thank you, Barbara. Dr. Sorrells, our head of school, is traveling back to St. Louis from the National Business Officers Association's annual meeting in Atlanta, Georgia this evening. So I've been asked to share a few updates regarding changes to the school's boarding program. The administration has closely examined the current state of our boarding program 
and is committed to continuing the legacy of boarding at Principia School. Given the anticipation of reduced enrollment in the boarding program and future master planning initiatives, now is the time to strategically and comprehensively review our program and work to enhance and strengthen it. We are excited to embark on this journey of progress and reimagining. After careful deliberation, the administration has decided to implement a unified boarding program model, consolidating students and staff of Canfield and Aaron Houses into one dormitory, Aaron House, starting in the fall of 2024. Aaron House will provide housing for upper school and eighth grade boarding students. Students will live on secured single gender floors, and each floor will have support and oversight from house parents of the same gender. Rigorous safety and security measures and policies will be implemented to ensure the safety, privacy, and well being of both students and staff members. To align with the new unified boarding model, a new staffing structure will be implemented. The new model consists of one director overseeing the home department, along with one assistant director, an office manager slash dorm social coordinator, and five house parent positions, three male and two female. The school is also working with a well-respected boarding program consultant to assess our program. This consultant will make recommendations about programmatic shifts to enhance our program and align it with current best practices. Overall, our strong spiritual life programming will remain unchanged. Our boarding staff will continue to be committed to character development and deepening students' understanding and practice of Christian science through relevant activities and opportunities. We will continue to communicate updates about the boarding program with the wider Principia community. Now I'd like to shift gears and introduce you to Lynn Scott, the school's Director of Sustainability and a current upper school faculty member. Lynn will provide an update regarding the exciting work taking place on the St. Louis campus that is related to sustainability. Over to you, Lynn. Thanks so much, Terry. I'm really thrilled to be here tonight with, with everyone um, to share a little bit about what sustainability looks like at the school right now and some exciting initiatives that we have going. I'm also thrilled, I just wanna let you know, I'm gonna speak for a little bit and then we have two students, um, Sanvi Javia and also Nessa Bishop who are gonna share a little bit from their experience so you can get some firsthand, firsthand hearing from them. So I'm gonna start out um, with looking at the school's core value of love. And it's really powerful that this core value has been adopted and, and I've really appreciated that this is the focus at the school. Um, I assume you're familiar with it, you've seen it before, um, but I'd love for you, I'd invite you to think about it within the lens of sustainability. When I read Lead with Love and I look at the attributes that have been um, connected to this core value, um, I, I hope as you listen and you hear about the things that are happening at the school, you also see how at Principia, sustainability is love in action. And I love thinking about that. This year, we have been able to work to connect and create a definition, a working definition for sustainability that I also wanna share with you here. Um, so go ahead to the next slide there. And here, I'll, here it is, sustainability at Principia means committing to the betterment of humanity for today and the future fostering connectedness among people and the environment and empowering students to become informed and active stewards of a bright future. This is such a powerful definition, especially when you think about it in terms of that core value of love. Um, when our focus is truly the betterment of humanity, 
then all of the actions, how we're teaching and, and the authenticity of what we have our students focused on, the, the focus is the betterment of humanity. So it's so natural to have sustainability um, at the heart of what we're doing. And as you'll see in the next slide, we're not new to sustainability. This is looking at just a few pictures, um, and it was really hard to pick uh, which ones I was going to highlight. But looking at early childhood and lower school and, and a little bit of middle school, at the school, we have always been very place-based in what we do. Sitting on 360 acres um, of land, that, that makes it a wonderful uh, laboratory for us to, to really dive deep into understanding ecosystem processes and understanding the interconnectedness of the world around us. So you can see, um, you probably have heard at some point about our third graders and the work that they've done with bees and connecting us to economics. And also at the school, um, as we think about this core value of love, it's, it's fantastic that our lower school students and our upper school students can come together as we're understanding permaculture and soil health. This is a little project called Soil Your Undies, which is quite funny. You bury underwear in the ground and then you dig it up 30 days later and that's a measure of soil health for you. You can check it out. It's a nationwide program. It's, it's actually pretty fun. If you're not aware, we certainly enjoy, um, enjoy and invite you to join our Bio Blitz, which happens every year in the first weekend of May. And when we think about this, this really is an opportunity for our entire campus to get out um, and to catalog what species we have on campus. The beauty also is that it's with partnerships with many other organizations. Um, we've got scientists and experts from Missouri Department of Conservation and the St. Louis Zoo and Missouri Botanical Garden that are here um, supporting our students and really giving us an accurate um, estimate of, of what we have. The last picture here is our middle school We Care conference and it just speaks to, to the good that's happening. On the upper school, in the upper school in the next slide, you can see just a few of the examples, the partnerships that we have with organizations um, and with the community really speaks to how our teaching and our approach to education aligns so beautifully with sustainability how our students are able to connect with others, be global thinkers and understand the interrelationships of how our actions um, can impact others for the betterment of humanity is truly powerful. So we have students partnering with organizations like the Zoo and Ujima and Seed St. Louis and participating with Model UN participating in uh, competitions like the Biomimicry Youth Design Challenge. And then hopefully you've heard about the Impact Challenge before, but that, that also is a really phenomenal way to connect our students, um, to, to connect them as change agents. It's an opportunity for students to be change agents in our community. And then we've got, we've had over 25 different professionals come to give feedback on the work and, and uh, to, to work with our students. So just a powerful thing. Um, but I want to lead you now to what, where we're at now, kind of where we're going. And so the focus of where we are at right now is exciting. Um, my, my aim this year and as we're moving forward is to intentionally integrate education for sustainability throughout the EC through 12 curriculum. And you might say, hey, you just showed me all the great things that you're doing already. Absolutely. But what can it look like when we are so intentional about what that vertical alignment can look like? We are at a really special place where we have early childhood all the way through upper school. And to be able to um, really look at that intentionality around education for sustainability and to start to document what that looks like um, allows you to catapult even further. So let's go, I wanna tell you a little exciting thing that's happened most recently, February 15th and 16th, just this, just this month, we had 17 teachers um, that were ranged from early childhood through upper school. They were our first cohort of teachers. And we took two days um, 
out of everybody's busy schedule, we came together and we partnered with the Cloud Institute, and they are a world-renowned education for sustainability um, organization. Um, and it was so powerful. We spent those two days really diving into what education for sustainability looks like, what that means, and then really getting to brainstorm about how does that translate to, um, to our classrooms. So that was exciting. And I want to share with you the kind of what that means to us. So when you look at what we are calling our lens of sustainability, this is what we mean when we say we want to educate for sustainability. And I'll tell you, this is like hot off the presses. We just have been of just this last fall, this is this has been developed and it's we've been working with it and we've been um, uh, modifying it as needed. And this is where we're at. You can see that definition of sustainability as love and action at the very top and some of the policies that uh, really align so beautifully. And then I want you to see, hopefully you can see this looks like, I'm hoping maybe it looks like to you, um, a shaft of wheat. And obviously that's a connection to Principia there. And on each of those bracts there, you have key aspects of what it means to educate for sustainability. Often people think, oh, are we talking about recycling? Sure, that's a part of it. But if you look at these, when we talk about systems thinking, we're talking about ensuring our students understand the interconnectedness of our world, the dynamics of systems and change, multiple perspectives. That is a core fundamental aspect of sustainability that we need our students um, to understand, to be able to um, to be effective as we affect change for the betterment of humanity. So systems thinking, local and global community, being local and global citizens, equity and justice, ethical considerations, and visioning. Those are the top five. And as you look at the things underneath that really we, are, we have um, identified as our key lenses of sustainability that we are looking to intentionally integrate throughout our EC through 12 curriculum. So that's some of the exciting work that has been happening kind of on the administrative level, um, but also um, what's exciting now is what this translates to into the classroom. So I'm gonna turn it over to Sanvi Javia, who is a seventh grader. And she's going to share what does this education for sustainability look like in the seventh grade realm? Go ahead, Sanvi. Um, well, this all started when um, in language arts, we were reading a book called Last Day on Mars, which it was a really good book. It was about two kids named Liam and Phoebe, who are like the last two people on Mars. And they have to make it out of their planet because it's about to die. And they're going to a new planet called RU5, which is like a replica of Earth. And to get there, they have to make it onto the starship, which is like the only way they can make it to get to RU5. And the only, like the root of this problem, like how Earth and Mars are like disappearing is because of climate change. So Ms. Hogan, our language arts teacher, um, had us do projects on it about sustainability. So I decided to do an art project on it and the art project had to be all sustainable. So I decided to make lanterns, as you can see on the top left corner, those are the lanterns I made out of soda cans. And my other project that I did was to interview Miss Scott. So I interviewed Miss Scott with some questions about climate change and sustainability in St. Louis globally, in our community in print. And it, I learned a lot from it. I learned that there's a lot of reasons it matters, like to make Earth a better place. And just like every little thing matters, but not in the way that you think it does. It's like all those little things add up and can make like a big difference. And Cause like two numbers, just two little numbers can make a big difference or can represent a big change. And it helped me learn like a deeper meaning of climate change and sustainability and it was really fun. Um, um, sustainability like in seventh grade or like in middle school is pretty fun because 
they integrate sustainability into like almost all of our subjects. Like in language arts, we get to do projects like this. In IS, we get to do projects on sustainability because last year we had to pick um, a goal, a sustainability development goal. And I picked SGD7, which was affordable and clean energy. So I had to make a project on it. I had to write a poem on it. I had to make a website on it, which is fun and hard, but like mostly fun because you get to learn a lot more from it and it makes you more interested in it. Kind of like my interview with Ms. Scott. It helped me learn that like I want to advocate for sustainability and climate change, not just because other people are, because I want to. And it's like something that makes me really passionate. Just like looking at Ms. Scott, like getting like all worked up on climate change. She's like, we can do this and this and this makes me feel like we can also do this and this and this. So that makes me feel good when I get to share what I think we can do better and advocate for climate change. Um, at the end of my interview with Ms. Scott, I was told to write a reflection paragraph on what I did. So I got to write a reflection paragraph and I just wrote about like all the things I could. I was stuck at first at a little bit of writer's block, but I got over that by just like going back to the video. I'm like, oh, I totally forgot about that and that. And like when I started, I could not stop writing. And it's all because of Miss Scott because she's been super helpful and stuff. And like now I want to like do something to make our earth better because of climate change and sustainability. So there's like a lot of things you can learn from this, including don't just let things go away. Try to like work on them and try to fix them, even if it's hard. So that's sustainability in middle school. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sanvi. I promise Sanvi wasn't a plant. Like she's essentially identified why I love being a teacher. So <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I want to then now shift over to Nessa Bishop, who you get to hear from the upper school perspective. What does sustainability look like at the upper school? So Nessa, I will turn it over to you. Everyone, like Ms. Scott said, I'm going to be talking about sustainable reuse and how I've been learning about that at the upper school. Next slide, please. Uh, my name is Nessa Bishop. I'm a junior, and in October, the 11th graders got to do a project called Impact Challenge. And for my Impact Challenge, I worked with Perennial St. Louis. Next slide. <laughs> Perennial is a nonprofit based in St. Louis that was founded by Jenny Murphy. It's been around since 2011. And their main goals are teaching people about creative and sustainable reuse and diverting as much waste from landfills as possible. After every class and workshop, they weigh every project that was made to see how much waste is diverted. And in the years since their creation, annually, they've averaged what diverting around like 12,000 pounds of trash. And last year in 2023, they diverted 18,000 pounds of waste, which is really cool and a really big number. Next slide, please. Um, for one week for Impact Challenge, basically, we got to go into St. Louis and work with nonprofits and organizations there. And so my group worked with Perennial and we got to learn about their community outreach and the work that their team does to teach about creative reuse within the community. And connecting with Perennial was so special because instead of just like reading about them online or like having phone interviews with them, we got to actually work in their space and like watch them interact with people. And Perennial was open to the public from Thursday to Saturday, which meant that for two of the days that we were there, we got to see people actually in the store and like take advantage of it which was really interesting to see because I wasn't really sure how many people would go, but a lot of people actually ended up being in the store and like, it made me realize that sustainability isn't just such like a small circle. It's a big like worldwide thing that a lot of people are interested in. Um, we then use our experience and information we learned that week to create projects on how our nonprofit, about our nonprofit and how it relates to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. My partner and I did Sustainable Development Goal 4, which was uh, quality education. So over the week, we got to do a lot around the shop. We helped them prepare for upcoming workshops. We also worked in their garden, which they used to uh, harvest dyes for plants for natural dyes. We learned about sumac trees and mint leaves and how you can use those and other flowers as natural dyes to prepare clothes for dye or to actually dye clothes. Um, we learned how to extend life in goods, like old t-shirts to make rags and 
t-shirt yarn, which actually works the same as regular yarn, but is more sustainable. We made our own crochet hooks from recycled wood. We also broke down large boxes of cardboard to make more usable pieces and made decor for the shop. Next slide. Organizations like Perennial and learning how to sustainably use and creatively and gaining experience on how to creatively reuse objects can help foster skills in res responsible resource management. It's important because it not only reduces waste, but it also encourages creative thinking when it comes to solving problems like waste disposal and pollution. Um, and by actively participating in initiatives like this, everyone involved gained a firsthand understanding of the impacts that creative use can have on minimizing our environmental footprint. It also helped to promote a circular economy where materials are continue, continually recycled and contribute to a more sustainable future instead of you buy one thing, you throw it away. You can keep reusing it until you get all of the value out of it. Next slide. Personally, the experience taught me that living sustainably and being environmentally conscious is doable with the right resources. And like the quote by Maya Angelou says, when you know better, you do better. And the more options that people are aware that they have, the more likely they are to use them instead of just throwing things away, which effectively extends the lifespan of products and limits the amount that people buy. Next slide. Uh, for me, the experience helped to shift my mindset to mindset away from the connotation that I was using trash to make art and towards viewing discarded materials not as a waste, but as valuable resources that were ready for a second life. Um, I also, also tried to adopt more sustainable practices and make a few changes that align with my lifestyle, like minimizing waste by reducing the amount of single-use items I buy. I also try to buy products that sell refills when possible and recycling materials appropriately and looking for products with minimal packaging. And like Sandy said, every little thing adds up. And so although I might not be doing the most extreme things like going 100% waste-free, I'm still helping and I believe that you can too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nessa. Love hearing from that. And, and hopefully um, that gives you a little bit of window into the, the school and what sustainability is looking like at the school. Thank you, Lynn and Nessa and Svani. I'm so grateful to all of you for sharing those experiences. And I hope all of you online have seen how rich an experience this is at the school. And now we get to see how unique Principia is because we are one of the few institutions in this country that has both a school and a college that enable us to have themes that can run literally from pre-K through to college graduation. And sustainability is absolutely one of those themes that is strong on both campuses and really provides that interconnectedness between the two campuses. So, excuse me, let me place there. Um, so at the college, of course, we are blessed with a campus that is 2,600 amazing acres of land. And it serves as a tremendous outdoor classroom and supports diverse sustainability projects such as pollinator landscapes, permaculture, carbon sequestration research, and a community garden. Our students have the chance to get involved in operational policies and energy audits, develop green purchasing standards, zero waste roadmaps, and conduct greenhouse gas emissions inventories. The, the kind of experience that our college students get before graduating is truly amazing and leads to fabulous jobs and really successful post-college careers. In addition, very exciting news to announce this evening. Principia College will break ground in April on an eight acre solar farm that will help us meet our sustainability and carbon neutrality goals. Our solar farm will reduce CO2 emissions by 4.5 million pounds annually. And when completed, it will meet 28% of our campus electrical needs saving more than $100,000 each year. 
So you'll see on your screen a map. And if you can orient yourself, it's a little challenging to, to orient quickly here. But if you see the gatehouse, um, which is labeled there on the map, you will see the placement of the solar farm across Beltrees Road from that. So we are very excited about that project. And again, stay tuned for more details on that. Principia College has an exceptional sustainability program that is deeply rooted in the extensive professional expertise of Dr. Karen Eckert and Dr. Nick Johnson, our faculty leaders in sustainability. And they will now share some inspiring details of the program at the college. I will turn it over to Dr. Nick Johnson. Nick. Thank you, Barbara, for that gracious introduction. I know I speak for Dr. Eckert as well when I say how pleased we are to have been invited to share our sustainability program with the audience this evening. Sustainability is an interdisciplinary major, and it's one of the two newest majors here at the college and has attracted a lot of interest from students. I'm going to focus briefly on our use of high impact practices, which are the cornerstone of our academic program. And then Karen will speak to our co-curricular and broader sustainability programming outside of the classroom. Next slide, please. I want to begin, uh, and one more slide, please. I want to begin discussing high, uh, discussing high impact practices by telling you about our capstone course, because it's so fun to see the creative ideas students are interested in and the products they produce. Sustainability majors complete individualized projects during their senior year. And this slide show, shows the wide variety of topics students have had recently. Notice some are heavily science focused. For instance, Abby Holt used ice samples from a glacier to determine how climate is changing. That title's on your left and I bet you'll be able to pick it out. You'll also see themes of economics, political science, business. All sustainability majors are required to double major, and the capstone allows them to synthesize content across fields and apply sustainability methodology to an area of interest that is often related to their second major. One of our current seniors has a great Principia-specific Principia capstone topic, not on this list because he hasn't graduated yet, he is looking at how a geothermal or ground source heat pump system could help us reduce our consumption of natural gas at the college. And he has been working with our facilities department, as well as the University of Missouri of Science and Technology, because they're working on their own fourth and fifth geothermal sites. The capstone is the final opportunity for students to demonstrate proficiency before graduating. And I'm delighted that one of our majors is working on such a relevant and timely topic for Principia. Next slide, please. We also incorporate plenty of field trips into the curriculum. Here in the top left, you see a class at the Three Rivers Community Farm, a wildly successful co-op located on Principia property and owned and operated by Amy Cloud and her family. Counterclockwise to that is students in our introductory sustainability course visiting our local materials recovery facility, in other words, recycling facility, and they see exactly where their recycling goes, how it is processed, and they learn what businesses around the region and country the recycling gets sent to once sorted. These trips and others like them give students opportunities to expand on their curiosity and to meet professionals, helping our students think through what their own career paths may look like. Next slide, please. Relatedly, we also bring speakers to campus, including through the Center for Sustainability's Changemaker Speaker Series. Two examples here. On the left is climate scientist Dr. Benjamin Santer, who has visited Principia a number of times over the years. And on the right is Beth Robinette, who among many other things is a cattle rancher uh, located near Spokane, Washington. And she uses holistic grazing and management practices on her land. Beth also spends a lot of time and effort helping train women to become the next generation of ranchers. Next slide, please. Our internships are as varied as our students and feature career prep experiences and community service throughout the US and as far afield as the Caribbean, the Alaskan Arctic, Africa, and the Mediterranean. At home here, you can see in the top middle center, former student Shane Whittier Hicks, 
Wittersix, excuse me, who did two internships at the U.S. National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Colorado. We work with students to find something that's right fit for them to help them be ready to move with confidence towards their career after graduation. Next slide, please. We also encourage students to attend professional conferences. Later this semester, we have several sustainability majors that will be attending a conference on climate change focused on the Midwest and another major attending a workshop on biofuels. As for the pictures you see, the one on the right is really cool. That's sustainability minor, Ronalyn at the United Nations Youth Summit in New York, one of three students we've had attend that summit over the years. Next slide, please. I haven't talked much about in the classroom yet, but we certainly do collaborative learning, lots of small group work, and we're always aiming to increase project-based learning. My favorite course to teach is our methods course called Environmental Decision Analysis, in which the students spend nine weeks developing their own cost-benefit analysis related to something on campus or the very close area, uh, honeysuckle removal, having an apiary, electrification of the Grafton Ferry, and so on. This requires quite a bit of interdependence, independence, excuse me, on the part of students. And in recent years, I've started requiring students to contact and interview professionals in the field. This is also a great opportunity for students to learn a lot more about campus operations at Principia College and work with various departments such as facilities, dining services, our land steward, and so on. Next slide, please. We also work with students on independent research. Sometimes this is a question that Karen or I might generate. For instance, I had a student last year do a research project on whether or not a biogas digester would be a good option for dining services. But many times the students have their own ideas. Here on the slide, you see a student generated question. Would a shipping container farm allow Principia to cheaply and easily access fresh and he healthy greens that are locally grown? Jolie Keplinger, pictured here, had this question, took environmental decision analysis to get a basic cost-benefit analysis done, and then returned as a postgraduate teaching intern for us in part to develop a much richer report. Next slide, please. And finally here, we also use the world as our classroom. Karen has participated in a Finland abroad, and in May, Professor Dane Carlson and I will be taking students to Nepal to get hands-on experience with climate justice. And now I'll turn it over to Karen to speak about our co-curricular activities. Thank you so much, Nick. Sorry. Clearly took me a second there to turn my camera on. Thank you so much for that um, great introduction of what we're doing in our classroom. There's so many amazing aspects to our sustainability program, both within the structured uh, curriculum and in co-curricular ways, which are actions taken and lessons learned outside of the classroom. I love the way that Lynn and her students reminded us that sustainability is all about leading with love. Next. And I would add that sustainability is also a promise. It's a promise that our current generation will do everything it can to ensure a more just, prosperous, and biodiverse future where all life is given the opportunity to thrive. Next. To this end, we prepare our students to enter the world with confidence, with joy, with empathy, fully aware of the challenges of the 21st century and the call to action. The knowledge and skills they learn in the classroom is the place we start, but it's not the all of it. If we're to craft enduring solutions to some of the world's most complicated problems, this generation needs to, head, needs to face those heads on, and they need to practice what they're learning before they get out into the world. So in the time we have left, I'm going to do my best to share just a couple of examples of what that sort of practice looks like on campus. We're surrounded by nature, as Barbara has said, 26 beautiful, 2,600 beautiful acres. And it's not uncommon for our students to direct their interest to on-site food production, to enhancing pollinator habitat, to protecting species that are rare or declining. And here we see our students learning to prune and harvest at the, at the, in our apple orchard and being rewarded with the opportunity to make cider to share with our campus community. Next. 
Similarly, careful attention is given to the community garden, weeding and seeding and watering and did I say weeding and weeding? <laughs> if you've ever tried to maintain a garden of this size, but it all bears fruit and flowers that again are shared to both nourish our community and to build essential skills, such as teamwork and research, planning and execution, all important learning outcomes for graduates going into a world where intentionality, responsibility, and service are critical skills. Next. In this case, a student took it up a notch, learning professional design software, resulting in a 5,500 square foot native landscape in the Science Center. With each of these projects, our students are nurturing professional talents that will set their resumes apart from their peers. Next. I think of all the times that our students have identified a problem and then rather than just complain about it, they work together to solve it. Some years ago, students began agitating about reducing the volume of single, waste, uh, single use plastic on campus. Soon a financing partnership between the Center for Sustainability and facilities resulted in at least one bottle filling station in every academic building and student house. And we can see the results that this initiative achieved within just a few years as the purchase of single use water bottles at the college store plummeted. Today, it's hard to imagine the campus without filling stations. And here's another example. Next slide. We have an issue <laughs> with students borrowing each other's bikes. If you don't have a bike and you're late to class, you may decide to grab the nearest bike and leave it at your destination, assuming that the owner is going to find it eventually. And of course they do. It's not a large campus, but it's unfair to the owner, isn't it? It's, it's, um, it's unjust and it is a time waster, and it creates tension. It's the perfect opportunity for creative problem solving. So last year, a sustainability major came into my office with a proposition. Why not put the dozens of bikes left behind by their owners when they graduate to good use by creating a rental program? Rather than punishing students without the means to purchase their own transportation, why not embrace them and meet the need? Next. So the Office of Campus Security, who's responsible for abandoned bikes, made space available and the sustainability program paid the upfront costs like tools and paint. And the students went to work, mixing and matching good parts into safe whole bicycles, gave each an inventory number and a cheerful coat of green paint. The students love it. Bike borrowing has plummeted and a student-led, socially just, and earth-friendly example of a circular economy is now part of campus life. Next. A challenge that plagues every campus everywhere is the chaos of move out and the thousands of pieces <clears throat> of clothing, shoes, bedding left behind. Every year, housekeeping spends countless hours sorting and bagging and transporting this load <clears throat> to donation centers. A very small sampling can be seen there on your left. When Joe McNabb House was taken offline as a full-time residence hall, we partnered with the Office of Student Life to transform the trunk room, which as you can see on the right, was in a special state of chaos all its own, into something remarkable. So are you ready? Don't blink. This is what the trunk room looks like today. Next. This remarkable transformation is the result of hundreds of student hours cleaning and sorting to create a peaceful sense of beauty and order for students who don't always have the means to shop off campus or sometimes even the means to shop at all. The closet has some 1200 items at any one time, all free to students during open hours. Another example of leading with love, reducing waste, providing work, and building community. Next. And speaking of reducing waste, we recycle pretty much everything at the college, not only glass and metals, plastic, paper, but also books and shoes, batteries, even tennis balls. But we didn't always recycle our food waste, a behavior that we know of as composting. Next. In 2014, a sustainability student identified the need to do something about food waste odor in her classroom. She spent a year interviewing and 
collecting data about food waste on campus, including why compostable takeout containers were piled high in every garbage can. Next. Turns out that the biggest obstacle to composting was that no composting bin was nearby. Using what she'd learned, she drafted recommendations and piloted a student-led compost program in Howard House. And the rest is history. A decade later, composting is still an active volunteer activity in our residence halls with bins and bags and training available from the sustainability department. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when students take initiative like this, when they take ownership of the narrative of positive change and they see these kinds of long lasting results, their education becomes more than just a classroom experience. It transforms the way in which they look at the world and their place in it. Next. So I'll just wrap this up by noting that our students must also learn that not all change is about mount mount bleh, mounting a successful campaign to ban plastic bags from the college door, to get more vegan options in the dining hall, or to have new purchasing standards approved, all of which they've already achieved. But what do they learn when change is slow, when they don't see a timely shift in investment or process, when the research is just a, a little piece of a much larger conversation? In that case, they learn the value of patience, of prayer, of trust, of playing your part, even if it appears small. And that's important too, because soon we'll send them into the world with a transformative education behind them and they'll set their sights on solving hunger or transforming a linear materials economy, things which take time. And they'll be prepared for that too, because the years they spent at Principia assured them that their voice matters and that they can make a difference because we were never afraid to let them try. Thanks. Thank you to all of our participants this evening. That was, I told you it would be jam packed and it was from start to finish. So I really am so appreciative of our audience staying, uh, staying tuned in and in fact growing as the evening went on. So I think we have time for three quick questions. Um, I'm going to throw one to the school, one to the college, and I'll, I'll finish up by, by answering one myself. Um, so I will start with you, Karen, since you're all warmed up, and ask, uh, what is, how is the program growing at the college? Do you have a lot of students enrolled in sustainability? Kind of what is the size of sustainability program? The sustainability major is actually the fastest growing major on campus, which we're pretty pleased with. We have about 15 majors and a handful of minors as well. And they are attracted, I think, to the program, which requires a double major. So it's quite a, an unusual uh, program at the college. And I think the students that are attracted to it really understand that the importance of, really understand the importance of learning at the at the boundaries between disciplines, that a linear major is just, is just not what the 21st century needs. We really need students who are multidisciplinary in their outlook, who are positive and innovative and have had a really broad education, which Principia is, is just perfectly set up for. It's not surprising that it's a, not only a very popular major, but one of the fastest growing job opportunities as well. So it's a good fit. Great, thank you. And that is a harbinger too of what we're doing overall with the with the curriculum and really um, emphasizing that interdisciplinary nature of things in uh, throughout the curriculum. And Lynn, I'm gonna toss the next one to you. And that is how is what the school is doing with its, its sustainability curriculum maybe um, unique in the world of education or how is it different from what other schools might be doing in this area? Yeah, it's it's really a special thing. Um, the concept of education for sustainability is a powerful one, and it's one that the, the framework that we have developed, um, we really looked at a lot of different models around the country and around the world, 
And what we did is, I mean, we looked at places like Shelburne Farms, Children's Environmental Literacy Foundation, Webster University has one, and the Cloud Institute, who we, who we partnered with. But what we did, and I think what makes this unique about the framework that we have put together, is we really like looked at all of that and pulled together what makes sense for us? What makes sense for the focus that we have when we talk about that interdisciplinary nature? We talk about leading with love. We talk about, you know, what what does what do we expect of our students and the teaching that we do when we talk about ensuring that we have authentic learning experiences and relevant experiences that are transferable and impactful for our students? What what are the ones that we want to lift up and really highlight in what um, what our focus is? So we kind of looked at all of those, and and I would say what I see other schools doing is kind of um, uh, not the the focus isn't necessarily the same. And what we've been able to do is to identify who are we, and what's important to us, and how are we going to leverage. Um, who we are for the betterment of humanity. And that's what we've been able to, to really solidify. And I'm excited to keep moving forward on it. Great. Thank you. And now, I, now I'm, I'm going back on my word because I'm going to throw another one in here. We have, we have one minute left. Um, so uh, there's a question about what metrics we keep about and, and how we are measuring on a year to year basis our own sustainability indicators. Karen, Nick, or or Lynn, who, Nick, you want to, I saw you unmute. So you're on. Karen can answer it faster. So I'll get us started and then she can, can um, finish. And we do keep track of a lot of things, and that goes from facilities keeping track of energy consumption across electricity and gas and, and water usage and so forth. Um, we measure composting uh, e each year, um, and uh, we Karen, uh, Karen maintains a lot of these lists, and so she may uh, have some off the top of her head. Um, but we also have energy master plan going on and are kind of working on uh, getting into some of the detailed portions of these with, with facilities as, as well. Karen? I think it's really it's a really important question because we can't manage what we what we don't monitor, right? And one of our biggest frustrations is that our buildings aren't monitored for energy use. Um, we're getting closer to that after long years of, of discussion. It's not inexpensive, but it is a, it's a really important metric that we're actually lacking. But almost anything you ask, you know, um, waste diversion, 45% over the national average, but about half of the zero waste that we'd like to be at, 50 to 80,000 pounds of food diverted from the landfill uh, every year. You know, so there's there's statistics associated with everything. We know that your your ecological footprint is one quarter of the national average as soon as you walk through the gatehouse because of the decisions that we've made here. So data driven conversations are really important to us. I, I hope that answered uh, what the uh, questioner had in mind. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to answer the last one. It's a shift in gear. Um, away from sustainability to some of the comments that I made earlier, and then we will um, draw this to a close because uh, we are actually now one minute over time and I'd like to be timely about these things. We got an early question about how we are introducing all students or a question, are we introducing all students during the interview process to Christian science? And then are we intentionally um, furthering their understanding of Christian science once they get here? And I will say yes, on both campuses, we are doing that. We do that in different ways, um, age appropriate ways on both campuses. So I gave you the um, example at the school of the lower school chapel. Uh, we were doing that chapel on a day when it was visiting day. So there were all sorts of different folks in the audience for that. We talk with families uh, in the enrollment process about Christian science, what kind of community they're entering. At the college, similarly, we are during the interview process talking about the kind of community that they're entering, um, talking about the fact that it is a Christian science uh, community. And then next year, 
One of the things um, that Roger Gordon, our college chaplain, has introduced are a series of spiritual retreats that have been very well received by students. Um, and we will actually be taking all students who are new to Principia, Christian science, non-Christian science, from whatever faith background they come, they will all be going on a retreat as part of their orientation. Um, and so we are very excited about that addition to orientation week. So there are a lot of different ways in which we're, we're doing that. And it's very much part of how we are onboarding our students and um, embracing everyone in this community as a principian. So with that, I will just issue a very, very warm um, thank you to all of our participants and call your attention to the upcoming events on this slide. And thank you to all of those of you who attended. Uh, please do stay tuned for uh, more Principia Forwards. And if you asked a question after um, we had time, we will uh, do our best to answer by email. Thank you so much. Good night.